Hey, VC. It's me, Roger. With the records. Back again. How y'all doing? Good? Good? A little on edge? I don't know about you, but I'm a little on edge. Um, but hey. Cheers. Wanted to come on and give a big thank you for some VCLT I received in the mail. Um, actually, I got a couple packages from DJ Trish over the past month or so, and I neglected to, to thank her for them. And thank you very much. It's a little note. Her mix, Lost in the Groove. Um, and also uh, a CD, uh, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, all the great hits, including Margaritaville. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, you know, another one of her uh, thoughtfully constructed mix CDs. Um, just crazy. Um, everything from Benny Goodman and Louis Jordan to Lee Scratch Perry to the Maytals to. Yeah. Thank you, Trish. Really, really nice of you to send these to me. Um, and then she sent me another one, which includes the uh, Spring Thing in 2018 mix, and another CD. Uh, Aaron Neville. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Warm Your Heart. From uh, 1991, I believe. Yeah. Um, Aaron Neville, what a voice. Uh, I can't remember who produced this. Um, this, is, this is good. He, he suffers from kind of weird production sometimes, but um, this is really nice. Some great covers on here. Everybody Plays the Fool. Um, uh, I Bid You Goodnight. Um, yeah, cool stuff. And, uh, a sticker. The Vintage Automobile Museum of New Jersey. From the Jersey Shore. Yes. Thank you very much, I, Trish. I really, really appreciate it. It's very kind of you to think of me. Um, and I also got some other VCLT. Um, kind of out of the blue. Now, some of you may remember, oh, I don't know, a while ago, I showed the latest Guy by Voices record, and I said, oh man, I missed out on these four, actually three, seven inches that I, I somehow I missed out on, and they sold out like that. And, um, and I was really bummed, and I was really like, God, am I, is, is my Pollard completism gonna have to come to an end here, you know? Because I was like, I don't want to spend huge amounts of money for these seven inches. I'm like, just, you know. So anyway, this guy, uh, Darren O'Toole, contacted me and said, oh, hey, I've got duplicates of two of them. I'll send them to you. And I'm like, well, I'll, I'll pay for them, you know. I, he's like, no, no, I'll send them to you. I'm like, okay, that's really awesome. And Now, you know, I, as these things go, I didn't hold my breath, and if he never sent them, that would have been fine. And, you know, I, I'm guilty myself, I think, of saying, oh, hey, I'll send you something, and then it, it never happens. Um... But anyway, he then, like, I don't know, sometime later sent me a, a picture of, you know, the confirmation number from the post office, and, and they showed up. And uh, so here we have Space Gun, title track from the Space Gun album, with a B-side called Kingdom of the Cars. Um, and it's on beer-colored vinyl. Now, if you go onto the Rockathon website, you can see that almost every other single that he's put out, and there's a gajillion of them, are still available, and they're in editions of a thousand. These were editions of 500, and in colored vinyl, and boom, they sold out immediately. Um, but they're also good, I guess, also help. But, but anyway, yes, and this B-side, Kingdom of the Cars, this not all B-side, it's a really interesting Pollard track that has a real, like, kind of menacing sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, industrial, sort of post-punk kind of thing going on. It's cool. It's a really cool track. And then another one, which you got at Princeton Record Exchange, apparently. Um, really great, creamy ballad. That's good. Maybe the best song on the album. Um, and it is on 
orange vinyl. It looks yellow on my screen, but it's much more orange than this looks like. Um, anyway, um, gorgeous song. It has uh, two B-sides, uh, Red Nose Speedway, track by Doug Gillard, and The Dead to Me's, a short track by uh, Bobby Bear Jr., the instrumental. Very cool. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, wow, that's just so cool that he would send these to me. And um, so thank you, Darren. Thank you very much. And really, you know, in these, in these times, it, I, I, it really, uh, you know, gives me a little, a little bit more hope in humanity or, you know, anyway, it's very kind of you and I really appreciate it. And, it, you know, it's like, okay, now I had to get the third one, right? And so I did See My Field, backed with uh, Disconnected Eyes and Leave Tomorrow. And it is on this translucent green vinyl. So, phew, my, uh, my Apollo collection continues. Uh, I guess I have to make, uh, you know, an update my GBV Pollard Collection series. I guess I should. Um, many people have asked me to, so maybe I should. Anyway, thank you, Darren. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're very, very kind of you. Um, really. And it's, they're great. They're great tracks. The B-sides are great. Um, it's a really good album. I say that every time. I guess I'm a fanboy. I guess I am. All right, moving right along. Here's another great thing that you all need to jump on. African Screen Contest 2 from Analog Africa. Two LP compilation of some just scorching Afro-funk, you know, Afrobeat stuff from Benin. That's just killer with a beautiful 24-page full-color booklet that tells these crazy stories about these musicians and how these records were made. And it's these Analog Africa compilations are just top-notch in every way and I'm attempting to collect all of them and I haven't shown them all but I'm gonna make a video once I have the majority of them and then I'm gonna show them all because they're all great and this just came out African Screen Contest 2 highly 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 recommended if you're into whoa wow. careful careful there watch the drinks and smokes boys that's what Don Elliott used to tell the drinks and smokes. All right. I tried to make this video last night and it was a complete disaster. So we're trying again. All right. The new Yob, Our Raw Heart on Relapse. Man, this is great. And the story is really pretty amazing. So Mike Scheidt, the main guy, lead singer, guitarist, Yob, this Portland-based doom metal band, been around for a long time. He got deathly ill, in fact, was very near death last year. He was in the hospital for a really long time, and um, he really looked like he wasn't gonna live. And um, But he survived, and they went on to make this record. And it is maybe their best record, maybe. I mean, they were always one of my favorite doom metal bands. But this, and they've always been, you know, not like, oh, Hail Satan. Well, well their first record is kind of, well, anyway. Um, there's always like a spiritual sort of Buddhist aspect to this sort of doomy, heavy stuff. And, um, and anyway, this is like a guy with a new lease on life. And you can hear it in his voice, you can hear it in the songs, and it's really powerful, and it's really well recorded and it's it's just you know if you're into this sort of thing I, I, in my opinion it doesn't, it doesn't get any better you know, the new sleep record is, is good but that is like oh, it's hard not to be moved by I mean unless you have a heart of stone or, or you just don't you can't get into the loud guitars and the shrieking vocals and that sort of stuff and I can understand that all right anyway Moving right along, the new Riley Walker, uh, Deaf Man Glant on Dead Oceans. 
like his last one, a big disappointment for me. I'm not, I'm, I don't get it after that run up to Primrose Green and the greatness of Primrose Green. You know, an album that I really hyped because, <clears throat> you know, it was a record I heard in the record store. I had no idea who he was. And, and I was like, this is awesome. And I bought it and I wound up with like the rare green version. I was like, oh, I was really excited about this guy. And um, I don't know what's happened to him. It's like the, the songwriting is just, it just sort of sits there and nothing really happens and there's no melodies and there's no hooks and there's no like even really very much playing going on and he's such a great guitarist and but I don't I don't I don't understand I I just don't this does nothing for me and um, you know I've heard he's a real party animal and I just wonder if maybe the drugs are taking their toll I don't know I don't know who am I to judge I but the music, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, I'm open to almost anything, but it just seems so diffuse and unfocused and I don't know. I don't know. Here's some great reissues here. Uh, Franco Battiato, click. Um, yeah, Superior Viaduct continues their reissue of the Italian Battiato stuff. And this is a solo album from 1974 from Franco Battiato. I think only ever issued in Italy and um, certainly never on vinyl in the U.S. until this. And um, It's in a gatefold and they reproduce the, the booklet in Italian. <laughs> you can be Italian, awesome, but um, you know, a very nicely done reissue as Superior Viaduct does. Um, and um, it's it's really good. It's almost, you know, it's moving in that like proto new age kind of thing in some ways. Spacey electronics, the first side anyway, with elements of like found sounds and stuff like that. But then towards the end, it, it becomes like this music concrete thing that I don't know if it totally works for me more than once. But so it goes. I mean, otherwise, a very welcome reissue and can sit next to those other. Batiato things there. Top notch. Um, and speaking of top notch reissue labels, Bureau B continues with the last two Tyndall records. Here's Reflection in from originally released on 1982 on Sky. Um, yeah. It's still like in that Berlin school sort of electronic music thing, um, but with elements of synth pop happening here with the vocoder you know enabling them to sing um, in German which is kind of interesting they sing, they sing in German on this and um, um, although it's not all that there's some instrumentals and yeah it's nice it's um you know you're moving into the 80s here um, and then this one their final album uh, Dirk die Zieten. I murdered that I'm sure uh, it's their final album. Apparently they'd had a big falling out by this time, and so they split the sides with um, one guy having side one and the other guy having side two, and they didn't work on each other's tracks. And yeah, it's kind of too bad, because it makes it kind of schizophrenic and not altogether satisfying, although nice. It's nice and nice to have, and you know, particularly here in the States, the Sky Records are you don't see him. You don't see him. And so, thank you, Bureau B, for reissuing. Okay, speaking of reissues, this came out recently. And I hemmed and hawed, and then, uh, you know, it was one of those things where this, I mean, I was into the record and the artist and everything, but, you know, reissues were, you know. But it was one of those things where the stupid hype sticker was, um, just like, this new label, uh, what is it? Analog Spark. And, well, here's the record. It's Steve Reich, Live Electric Music. Uh, originally came out on Columbia Masterworks in 1968. It has two great classic Steve Reich pieces, Violin Phase, performed by Paul Zukowski on side one, and It's Gonna Rain, the tape piece from 1965 on side two. Um, but anyway, the hype sticker said, you know, Analog Spark, the, the new label with the best sources, you know, although they don't say what the source is exactly. Mastered by the best engineers, although it doesn't say who mastered it. Pressed at the finest record pressing plants, although it doesn't say who pressed it.
dressed it and played in it. <laughs> and so, and you know, the best jackets, and it doesn't say, you know, who printed the jackets. It, 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 yeah. All that said, it does sound good, you know? Um, but, you know, it's like Analog Spark, Division of Razor and Tie, which is a division of Sony Music Entertainment Incorporated trademark. You know, it's, um, I don't know. The music's great. It's going to rain, especially as a classic. Yeah. I've said before, Steve Reich is probably my favorite of the minimalist composers. I just find his music the most musical, I guess. I guess. Okay, that's it for new records. Um, I haven't been doing a whole lot of digging, when and when I have, I haven't really found much, but I did find this. Anthony Braxton. This is an LP. I, I have a shit ton of Braxton LPs from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, I did not have this one from Actual, BYG Actual 15. And the title is that, that symbol. Um, this is a great record. Classic. Um, you know, the thing is, I, I think these guys, um, oh, Leroy Jenkins and um, oh, I'm going to forget his name again. Uh, the trumpet player. Um, they contributed compositions also to this. You know, it, it wasn't like Braxton's band, although this makes it look like it's you know Braxton's record. And, you know, this band didn't last very long, Steve McCall. And, uh, but really great, really great. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm a huge Braxton fan. Like I said, I have a lot of a lot of that stuff, and um, I love the Actual label too. You don't see this around, this stuff around. Down here in Dick's Land. Not very often. Alright, found this used at um, Grimy, so it was cheap. And I was re really happy about it because it was the one Wolves in the Throne Room EP that I was missing. Uh, what's it called? Malevolent Grain. And Southern Lord from 2000 something. What can I say? American black metal. Uh, a band I really love, you know, like Yob. It's, it's another like band that I just I, I love everything they've done. Um, I have no criticisms, you know. And this is the same thing. Although it's kind of funny. Um, so one thing I like about Wolves in the Throne Room is that they're not beholden to the sort of tradition of black metal sounding like crap. Um, and so they they you know make their records in real studios like Electrical Audio in Chicago and um, so they sound really good um, although it's funny I was I put this on my wife is in the kitchen and it starts up and she's like what's that horrible sound what, what's wrong what's wrong is there something wrong with the turntable what's that sound what's that horrible sound <laughs> like it's okay it's supposed to sound like that you know so that said you know it is a black metal record and like yeah this this hissing and gurgling, crackly sound was all part of how the track starts. And, um, but yeah, it was, yeah, what can I say? I love it. So now my Wolves in the Throne Room collection is you know, complete, and, and unless there's like some other weirdo import-only things that I don't have and whatever. All right, so this is kind of a nice find at a place that often doesn't yield very much. Uh, Scree Plitty, early, um, collects their early singles and EPs. Uh, came out on R Rough Trade in 2004. Double LP. Um, had to be mastered from vinyl because the master tapes for those things are long gone. So, yeah, Screwy Politi. This really shows their evolution from, you know, this, just a scrappy little punk band from Leeds. Um, very political, very crude, like their, their you know, town mates, the Mekons. Um, and, and the Mekons then went into, like, went into country music and stuff, but, but then Screedy Politi sort of evolved into a synth-pop band, you know, Perfect Way or whatever, it was a huge hit. Um, the, none of this sounds anything like that, but you can hear by the end they're moving in that sort of direction, and um, it's fascinating, it's fascinating stuff, and um, yeah, it's that whole era from like, oh, from like 77 through like 82 or something like that, something like that. Yeah, nice find. Really nice. Nice condition. Um, okay. Well, one last thing. I, 
found this at Hound Dog Hooters Ted Sale last time, and um, finally got around to cleaning it up. Trouble Funk, Saturday Night Live from Washington, D.C. from 1983. Go, 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 go. Yeah, so go, go music out of D.C. I had a friend, a housemate, who was really into this stuff, and um, it's kind of why I don't have any, I don't think I have any other Go-Go records, but when I saw this and was like, ah, oh, in decent shape, I thought, oh, that'd be fun. And it is fun. It's a great party record, man. And so Go-Go music, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of dance music. Um, uh, very much out of the P-Funk, James Brown kind of mold. It's just a groove, and really, like, it's the first side is just one long groove, and then, like, you know, take it to the bridge, and then the horns come in, and uh, there's not really even... Verses and choruses, and like it, it's just you know a groove and maybe some horn riffs, and then this guy kind of exhorting the audience to get it on. And uh, man, the groove and it sounds really good. I was really kind of amazed. Like no cheesy '80s shit going on here. No, man, this is you know party on. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, thanks for your comments, thanks for, um, subscribing, thanks, thanks for being you. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll see you soon. Bye.